So you are a politician, more specifically an ambassador, a diplomat, a world leader, you name it, right? With that being said, you are going to a, you know, general assembly meeting, a United Nations meeting or something like this. You're going to see a lot of other world leaders and you are, say, for example, the ambassador, president, prime minister of a country that is important, but not, you know, not up there in terms of the world powers, respectively, like China, Russia, the US, you name it, right? Okay. So you get to the you get to the meeting, the world meeting, and you start having small talk after the official meeting is over. Everything goes according to plan. You're not going to get involved in, you know, other things that the U.S. is and things like that. You then start speaking to other world leaders and they start. And one of them who, you know, pretty well says to you, hey, ma'am or sir, president, whatever. Why don't you do this? Look into this country, go to your government, go back to your leaders or to your superiors and tell them to look at this in this country. And you say to that person respectfully, we have no interest in that country. Right. And then that ambassador or politician says to you, no, 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 but you don't understand. You will soon. Now, what do I mean by that? So before I get into all that, I just want to say that we do have a Patreon. It does help support the show. It basically is our only form of funding to keep the show alive, obviously, because of the deplatforming and every and many different things. But on top of that, we also show things on there that YouTube would definitely kick us off for saying. Now, let's jump into it. The Arc Discharge, spreading micronovas for locust secretion. So before we get into the, the actual articles and the documents and the, the evidence and things like this, the reason why I brought up the example in the beginning, okay, folks, is because sometimes we need to understand, not just on a political level, but even on a spiritual level and even at an extraterrestrial level, there are sometimes factions or interests in things just because others are interested, right? That's like saying, for example, you know, I'm interested in something because of the fact that someone else is, but I personally have no desire to go there. But, you know, because that other guy or girl is, I got to watch them right? So this is that sort of locust hive mind mentality. So let's jump into it. Ancientfiles.com. Let's take a look here. National Geographic photographer confesses he encountered underwater alien beings. Now take a look at this. Louis Lamar was one of National Geographic's greatest photographers of all time. He amassed quite an impressive CV so far has worked on a ton of projects alongside Ocean X and recently he's come out with an incredible statement to say the least. And quote, before I go on, I want to say that Ocean X is a direct subsidiary of the cyber polygon which we will be getting into in a long form sort of series based segment in the coming days in order to properly convey his thoughts he released a one minute and a half video in which he attempts to explain the world how he came upon this discovery he'd spotted multiple deep sea arachnids venomous snakes and more similar creatures but the species he came across that faithful day was in no way shape or form from our planet now he spotted it when he was charged by a bunch of sharks and orcas. Fearing for his life, he tried to get out of their sight, but then he realized they were not running after him. They were running from something. At first, he thought they were stingrays of some sort, but it was soon obvious to him that they were something else. End quote. So, folks, do you notice something? This particular, um, I guess you could say, National Geographic expedition had many different financial funders and backers, but one of them was a financial back. Uh, one of them was De Beers. Do, does anyone know what De Beers is? De Beers is allegedly the largest diamond mining and diamond company in the world they have been allegedly accused for many many years based on certain lawsuits of storing and hiding tons of diamonds okay and then increasing the uh the the price that they charge on the ones that are public that they made publicly available because they would say oh well you know there's not too many diamonds so the value of each one has to go up when really they've been stockpiling a bunch on the back end why have they been doing that so let's take a look here ewtn.com south africa's de beers the most unethical corporation in the world Social conservatives may be criticized for being more concerned by the actions of corporations which transgress, transgress, excuse me, doctrinal Christian no-nos like supporting abortion, things like this. But are we social conservatives, but also economic conservatives blind to their transgressions? De Beers is a corporation which is set up by Cecil Rhodes, the British explorer and adventurer who gave his name to the African country, country of Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. The purpose of De Beers was the exploitation of diamond mines in South Africa. The challenge was that, according to Epstein, while diamonds were a rare resource only a couple of centuries ago, the discovery of extremely rich mines in South Africa and other countries or of Africa was threatening to drive the prices down. The establishment of De Beers consisted, therefore, in a parallel effort of setting up a cartel with other producers in order to control international prices of diamonds. End quote. Why are the diamonds needed? The diamonds are needed for the crystalline plasma charge that induces the micronovas that the insectoid extraterrestrial species 
species and the locust race are harnessing. Now, how do I know that? Let's take a look at this right here. TorontoSun.com. And you can find this article elsewhere, too. Hillary Clinton suggested taking out WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange with drone report. End quote. What does that have to do with diamonds and extraterrestrials? Well, WikiLeaks' Assange has leaked many different files pertaining to Hillary Clinton, Gilgamesh, extraterrestrials, you name it. But a lot of people don't know that because if you, you just watch the mainstream media, all you're going to see is, oh, WikiLeaks equals bad because they only leaked DNC stuff. They leaked many other things to Antarctica, frozen penguin glands, all of that. And we've covered quite a significant amount of it. Now, let's take a look at this right here. The locust people and the de-evolution of humanity. Neoanthrophosophy or posophy.com, excuse me. Now, it is hard to imagine how humans could arrive at the depopulation agenda we see happening everywhere in our times. Now, before I go on, do we not notice this happening right now? Consciously created evil that intends to exterminate the majority of humanity is spelled out in the writings and actions of different groups of eugenicists like the Pilgrim Society, imperialistic British white supremacist, supremacist communist, fascist, Planned Parenthood, WHO, CDC, NIH, and many others, end quote. Now, before I go on, do you notice, folks, how this seems to be similar to not just what I've been talking about, but what many of you have been talking about as well, too, for the past many months of the different factions trying to vie for control? Okay, now let's take a look at this right here truthbits.blog mantids and the locust people who are these entities stuck between dimensions that are wreaking havoc upon humanity cliff high calls them the mantids but rudolf steiner described them as the locust people all right end quote so these locusts essentially what is happening here because you might be saying dave you seem a little all over the place well these locust people are transcending and they are ultra terrestrials from this dimension and from others and it's sort of like when you have i guess you could say a um a glitch on your computer right you try to open a program it opens it shuts down opens up again this is what is happening to the biological cells of these insectoids for many many years which is why we see more of the pyramid shaped craft which tend to be insectoid or at least locust base which rep based excuse me which represent a larger esoteric hive mind to the aspect of things now with that being said diamonds are being harnessed here because not just of the propulsion system but propulsion at least into the perception of how he, we as humans understand it propulsion is the core foundation for the energy that can also help direct mass consciousness but these locusts cannot do that without mass amounts of diamonds which harness piezoelectricity and piezoelectricity is the same technology or sorry the same method that we presume was at least one of the methods allegedly that the egyptians used for the pyramids right when you take a certain type of stone or certain type of diamond or certain things and you compress them together at a certain frequential energy what ends up happening is that they produce electricity but on top of that they produce electricity that trans transcends that of this dimension or even descends which is why sometimes we see insectoids in very paranormal places because of the fact that their esoteric entities and biological bodies are attempting to transcend into this dimension but it is simply not working now, let's take a look at this right here. News.sky.com or Sky News, which I, I generally like considering they're mainstream, so, so keep in mind. And I quote, in 1990, a bee learned to clone herself. Now her army of millions threaten other species. End quote. You might be saying, Dave, why are you talking about bees? Well, notice how this has to do with the example I gave at the beginning of the episode, which is that, again, keep in mind, sometimes the interest of one is only because others are interested in a particular target, asset, or assertion of a certain, I guess you could say, object or objective or goal. So let's take a look here. A subspecies of South African honeybee has been discovered to be comprised of millions of clones from a single individual. Let's take a look here. Over the past three decades, a single individual bee has successfully created millions of clones of herself thanks to hitting a bizarre genetic jackpot. This growing army of clones possess a serious risk to the hives of the African lowland honeybee, 10% of which are collapsing every year as the colonies become filled with clones that consume their resources refuse to share in the work end quote notice something a subspecies of south african honeybees where does De Beers operate the most out of africa right south africa different parts of africa on top of that this particular property where these bees have supposedly been you know uh, i guess you could say genetically transcending and creating this hive mind mentality believe it or not folks is actually owned by the De Beers corporation that particular property why are these bees doing this on that that particular property it is because the energetic esotericism of the deep underground energy uh, uh, deep underground military base 
bases, excuse me, of the diamonds that are being stockpiled are accumulating in a piezoelectric, uh, piezoelectric fashion that are allowing for these bees to sort of become smarter because of what is physically underground and beneath them. With that being said, Let's take a look at this right here, medialens.org. A remarkable silence, media blackout after key witness against Assange admits lying, end quote. Julian Assange, again, the guy who basically got Assange arrested from and taken out of that embassy turned out to be a, a, I guess you could say, not the most reliable person in the world, but it just goes to show you how much the government wants to get him, which because he was going to leak files, which he did some of it on Antarctica and the penguin glands, right? But he wanted the penguin pineal glands, but he was going to leak more files showing that the stockpiling in South Africa was creating a hive mind mentality, which was allowing for these insectoids to actually go from their dimension and create more of a solidified biological, um, I guess you could say solidification in this dimension. Now, the final thing, this is the best part I would say in in my personal opinion infinityexplorers.com the alien abduction of Krista Tilton hidden underground military base and strange people in cells now before I go on I want to say this story coincides perfectly with Phil Schneider allegedly this occurred in the Dulce, the Dulce or the Dulce base okay but let's carry on here now the this happened in July 1987 when Krista Tilton suddenly passed out in the afternoon. She regained consciousness but found that she had disappeared for three hours during which she did not know where she was and what happened to her. At first, she didn't give it much concern, but then thinking that she had passed out from fatigue but soon she also began to suffer from nightmares in which she, she saw strange things but felt a strong fear and somehow Tilton decided that these nightmares were the result of her lost three hours now folks it gets better this led Krista Tilton to look for similar cases that happened to other people after which she realized that she could be a victim of an alien abduction now she then went on to regressive hypno hypnosis which has helped some of these people who have been abducted recover their memory so let's take a look so long story short her next memory was that she was inside the ship on the table all right and another humanoid approached her whom she later gave the nickname a guide now end quote before i go on i want to say that this guide essentially was speaking to her telepathically reassuring her that listen you will be experimented on but everything will be fine so let's take a look he gave her a glass of some liquid and told her to drink and when tilton drank she immediately felt incredibly cheerful and charged with energy after that the humanoid took her out of the ship and she found herself in a deserted area next to a small hill now take a look at this it was dark but a faint but i saw a faint light near what looked like a cave we approached this place and then i saw a man dressed in a red military style jumpsuit or a very humanoid looking one like the pilots mine the guide seemed to know the man because he greeted him as we got closer and i noticed that he had some sort of patch on his uniform and that he was carrying an automatic weapon when we entered the cave we found ourselves in a tunnel and i realized that we were going directly under a large hill or mountain they were met by another guard in red and then i saw a computerized checkpoint with two cameras on each side to my left there was a large groove where a small transit vehicle was parked to my right it looked like a long corridor with many offices now folks this is going to sound like a scene out of the men in black but let's go let's take a look we got into a transit car and it seemed like it seemed sorry took a very long time to drive to another protected area then i was told to stand on some some kind of scale like device facing the computer screen all right i asked my guide where we were going and why he replied sparingly that he should show me some things that i need to know for future use then he told me that we had just entered the first level of the institution all right. Now, long story short, take a look and quote, take a look at this diagram right here. Right. And this person, uh, this particular woman was describing the different extraterrestrials she was seeing as she was walking down hallways in this underground base, which seems to be the Dulce base. And she described this particular drawing as very similar to what she understood the different levels were because her guide had told her about some of the different levels. She was then experimented on by human beings much larger seeming seemingly looking human beings insectoid aliens and gray aliens and a lot of these gray aliens were working on their craft craft ma their ships craft maintenance some of them were performing surgery on her and many different things like this now why do i bring this up because this is the hive mind infiltration of the different experimentations through legitimate corporatization of the de beers company that is using its way to sort of infiltrate and i guess you could say adapt its form of a hive type formality from the underground base into a physical manifestation on the surface and some of you will see that very shortly in the way in which some of this works but take a look at this right here we approached a large room and i looked inside i saw huge large tanks with computerized sensors and attached to them 
a huge hand-like device that extended from the top. I heard a humming sound, and it looked like something was moving inside the tanks. Take a look. I began to approach the containers, and just then my guide grabbed my hand and dragged me roughly into the corridor. He told me there was no need to see the contents of the containers, and added that this would only complicate matters. End quote. Now, this woman, after her, you know, she was experimented on and things like this, which you folks can check in the link in the description on YouTube, because it is quite a long story, I must admit, talked about how she did some research later on, and found that there are bases north of Tucson, Arizona, that are under the name of Evergreen Aviation. Interesting, Evergreen. Anyone notice what ha what's happened with Evergreen very recently, right? With the Evergreen ship and things like that? Those are all subsidiary companies. Anyone know who the real o owner of Evergreen, the overarching company of all the smaller ones is? Nobody knows. No one really knows. All we do know is that Evergreen Aviation belongs to the CIA. All right, folks. So what we're seeing here is a, I guess you could say a sort of conflation, if you will, of private contractors, because I don't know if you folks know this, but the, allegedly the military is not allowed to build anything. So they need to they need to use private contractors, which not only helps business on the front end, but it helps hide the extraterrestrial form of the locust invasion on the other end. So what they are trying to do is they're working with a select faction of human beings to allow for the infil infiltration of the different insectoids and locusts on a spiritual and esoteric level to manifest physically to then replace the resistance of the reptilians, if you want to call and you might be saying, Dave, what about micronovas? Well, they are using micronovas to essentially extract this energy into certain pockets of the planet where they stockpile the diamonds. So we can see here that this is being used for propulsion, could be also used for a form of a, a stargate, if you will, to allow them to fully manifest in this dimension. So with that being said, I would like all of you folks to let me know what you think. It certainly is very interesting. We're just getting started with the whole locust insectoid sort of mindset of the way in which the esoteric apparatus works, and we'll catch all of you very, very soon. Cheers.